Ever since she broke into the film industry with her role as one of the mean girls in Mean Girls, Amanda Seyfried has been making regular appearances in romantic comedies, thrillers, and horror films. Her latest project is in Things Heard and Seen as a young artist who discovers her husband and their new Hudson Valley home have sinister secrets after they leave Manhattan for the small town life. Seyfried isn't slowing down anytime soon. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Amanda Seyfried. She's a child star. Amanda Seyfried launched her career at the age of 15 with a role as a troubled teen on As the World Turns. After that role she appeared on another soap, All My Children, before she landed her breakout role as the ditzy blonde Karen in Mean Girls. After Mean Girls, she appeared in several indie films, which lead to a role on the HBO series Big Love, about a secretly polygamous Mormon family in Utah. From there she won starring role in the hit musical Mamma Mia, and she has slowly become a familiar face on the big screen. She was shy in high school. People will always remember Amanda Seyfried as a popular girl in Mean Girls. However, she was completely different from the character in high school. She describes herself as being someone shy and also far away from popular. She said, I was made fun of at school for being pale and ugly. She is still shy and doesn't like to be under the spotlight. She recently admitted that she suffers from panic attacks due to life in the spotlight. She even moved to a farm to have the chance to have a normal life. During an appearance on Sunday Today with Willie Geist, she said, it was very conscious. I've always wanted to live on a farm. I just need to feel grounded somewhere that I can trust will always be there. She originally auditioned for the role of Veronica Mars. Seyfried originally auditioned to play the titular sleuth in Veronica Mars, a teen war about a high schooler cracking the seediest cases in her seaside town. Creator Rob Thomas was blown away by her audition, saying that she was about 100 times better than anyone else we saw, just spectacular. Although Kristen Bell eventually snagged the role, Thomas decided to cast a then-unknown Seyfried as Lily, Veronica's best friend and the person whose murder charges the trajectory of Veronica's life forever. In fact, Thomas was so impressed by her performance that he ended up writing three or four times more scenes featuring her character than originally intended, with Lily popping up in flashbacks, dreams, and even as a ghost. She turned down the role of Gamora. Gamora is flawlessly played by Zoe Saldana, but once upon a time, Amanda Seyfried was invited to join the MCU taking on that role. She decided to turn it down. She just didn't think Guardians was right for her. She told Marie Claire UK, I didn't want to be an action hero or wear a green suit for like 10 years because I don't want to be miserable. I think happiness comes from being free. In 2020, she also admitted to thinking the film would flop. She told The Hollywood Reporter, I didn't want to be part of the first Marvel movie that bombed because I said who wants to see a movie about a talking tree and a raccoon. Which clearly, I was very wrong. She received her first Oscar nomination in 2020. Seyfried received a long overdue wave of recognition for her role as 1930s film starlet Marion Davies in David Fincher's biographical drama Mank. Her performance scored her a Best Supporting Actress. She told The Hollywood Reporter, it's a big turning point for me in my career, to be recognized by your peers, you don't expect it, but when it happens, it just deepens my clarity on having chosen my career. She hit her pregnancy while filming Mank. Seyfried hit her pregnancy as she filmed Mank. She opened up about the difficulties of working on the project as she was expecting her son. Speaking with Julianne Moore during a Vanity Fair cocktail hour live chat, Seyfried said, I'm so glad because I love my son, but I was so ill. The weekend before one of the big scenes, where actually I don't have any lines, I thought that it was going to be a little easier even knowing that I was going to have to be in the makeup chair at 3.30 a.m. on one of the days. I was in bed the whole weekend thinking I don't think I can do this. I can't be sick and working with David Fincher and play Marion Davies at the same time. The only person she confided in on set was costume designer Trish Somerville. She regrets her role in Les Miserables. It's not often an actor openly criticizes a past performance, but Seyfried made it clear on a recent episode of Variety's Actors Are Actors series that she regrets her performance as Cassette in Tom Hooper's 2012 Les Miserables musical adaptation. She told Vanessa Kirby, I have a lot of moments where I just felt complete regret. I wish I could redo Les Mis completely because the live singing aspect, I still have nightmares about it. Hooper did not rely on backtracks for the music performances and instead had his cast sing live on set, which terrified Seyfried. According to her, her voice was not strong enough to successfully pull off the role. 
She said she could play cassette now as she has worked diligently to improve her singing. She didn't get roles because she's too fat. In 2014, Seyfried revealed that she had been passed on for roles because she was considered overweight. She tweeted, fun fact, I almost lost out on several roles in my career because I was overweight. Wrong, America. Although she didn't specify what roles she didn't get because of her weight, in the past she has talked about needing to work out to be considered for roles. In 2010's interview with Glamour magazine, she said, if I didn't run and work out, there's no way I would be this thin. But I have to stay in shape because I'm an actress. It's fucked up and it's twisted, but I wouldn't get the roles otherwise. If I'd been a bit bigger, I don't think they would have cast me for Mamma Mia. She's very open about her mental health. Seyfried has discussed her struggles with OCD and anxiety. And she's shared her disdain for the stigma surrounding it. She told Marie Claire UK, I just think, you go to your doctor about heart problems, or an eye doctor, if you have an infection, you have to take care of yourself. Mental health is so segregated, it sucks. You don't necessarily have to have something wrong with your brain to have mental health issues. She also suffers from stage fright. That's partially why she avoided doing theatrical work until 2015. She told Entertainment Tonight, it was one of those things I kept putting off because I was scared. She made her off-Broadway debut in The Way We Get By. She has taxidermy collection. She buys dead animals that have been stuffed and preserved, she considers it art. On The Jonathan Ross Show, she said, when taxidermy is done well it's an amazing piece of art. I love animals, and they're very easy to look after when they're dead. I recently decided I was going to start building a parliament of owls, because I only have one. But I have a horse, a miniature horse, it's a baby. It's quite small, it's much bigger than my dog. His name is Antoine. 